when we were designing the 13 handgun sites, we asked ourselves, is there really a solution to a problem out there in the handgun site space? And we found that there is. Uh, we found that there's two major components or areas of shooting that need to be taken into consideration when we're thinking about sights in our eyes when shooting a handgun. And those two things are very simple. Number one is stress sight picture, and number two is precision sight picture. Now I'm gonna take a little deeper dive into those two things so you have a better understanding of what we're talking about here and why we design the sights this way. So a stress sight picture, what is that? Now we've always been taught clear front sight, clear front sight. Maybe you've been told that by an instructor or maybe your parents or my dad taught me that, of course, the military taught me that. And that's what we would consider actually a precision sight picture. But what happens when you're under real critical stress or a body alarm response in a gunfight, different things are gonna happen that we don't typically think about, which is one of the problems that we wanted to solve. So stress sight picture. When you are under critical stress, if a guy comes out at me in a store, uh, I, I'm a patrol officer and I walk up on a vehicle, I see a gun or a knife coming out on me, and you are, you are startled. There's a startled a stimulus there that's about to kill you or somebody else in society. Your body's gonna go under stress, and everybody's felt this, whether you've been on a roller coaster, or you've been in a car accident, or you just, not even an accident, you slammed on your brakes because the guy in front of you in the interstate scared the hell out of you and you had that stronger than coffee feeling, that's, that's a body alarm response. So now your body does things naturally. It's a human defense mechanism to have a body alarm response. We want that to happen. So we have to work with that. But the problem is nobody really trains to body alarm response and shooting. So instead of just dumbing things down, we want to try to educate you guys and, and, and have a higher understanding of, of how to train to this. So when we looked at the sites, one of the things that you're going to notice is when you come up on a target, specifically coming up on target very quickly, you're going to notice that there's a there's no colors and shapes, there's no uh, distractions on the gun itself. Now that's, that is very important here. And I know there's a lot of different shapes and sizes of sights out there and all different types of precision cuts in the back. We wanna keep it simplified under critical stress because since it's a natural human defense mechanism, we don't wanna distract that image. Because if I put a golf ball in front of my sight and I put it up really quickly, what do you see? You see a golf ball. Well, the problem is your eyes have a, increased blood flow to the center field of vision, which what that does is the ciliary muscles and fibers around the lens expand the lens out. So it helps you create a distance focus, which eliminates the possibility for a near sight focus. Well, guess what's in your near sight focus? Your front sight, your rear sight. So we're actually going to take in the target just like we do with red dots. And that's why those are phenomenal tools because it allows us to see the target clear, the threat clear, because our eyes are the lens and our brain is a film, okay? So that's kind of how stress sight picture works in a nutshell. So if we look down range at a close target and I, I bring it up quickly, if I was simulating a stress sight picture here, you'll notice that the contour of the rear sight of this 13 sight as it sits on this Glock 19, the sight is designed around the frame or the slide it's sitting on, okay? It's not just all the sights are the same. They are based on the actual gun. That's how we design and build them. So what that helps me do is, is almost gives my, my eye this peaking point. Like it just comes to the top of the site, like I'm climbing this ladder right into the target itself with minimal distraction. And that's the key thing here with the visual aspect is your eye does these little movements called saccades. It also does a lot of other types of movements, but specifically saccades here is what we're looking at, which is the ballistic rapid movement of the eye of an animal or human's head or eye. So when we look at the back of a slide, as you bring it up on target, you'll notice that your eye will wanna go right to the front sight or the target without distracting it, drawing these little saccadic artist sketches as we call them. Now our eye can move upwards to 250 plus frames per second, especially if you're an athlete, you got, you got uh, some serious visual ability. Um, the average person might be around 45 or 60 frames per second. But if you can see faster, your eye is going to even draw it even faster, which means that it's going to distract the image more. So if you have blocky curved sights on the back, your eye is going to keep drawing that over and over. And this is where we get sensory overload to the brain when we're trying to shoot under stress. So again, we want to simplify this is why we did that for the 13 sights under stress sight picture. All right, precision sight picture. That's why we put sights on the gun, right? We need to have a higher level of precision, a higher hit probability at any given distance. That means if I'm shooting at a hostage target or a bad guy at three meters, I need that perfect one inch circle in that guy's head. 
or I'm shooting something out of 25 meters bullseye, or I'm shooting something out of 200 meters with a handgun. That's when you want that precision. So we really try to think about how that works with the human eye again, not just again building a sight on a handgun. You'll notice that when you look down the sights after your eye drops perfectly into that, that notch, the notch is much deeper than your average sight out there on the market. Now why we did that is because with binocular vision, we've got these two laser beams coming out of my eyes, right? So our eyes will converge or diverge as they come in or out. So if I bring my finger into my eyes, my eyes actually literally move inward, which is the convergence of the eye. And as I look out to a farther target, my eyes diverge out. So now we're putting the sight up into our eye line, which is linear. Now if we have a deeper notch, um, you're gonna have longer daylight like we have here. If you have a wider, shorter notch, this is where your eyes are gonna start that cicading back and forth to left and right. Now we don't want that with this binocular vision. So that's why we have that 125 size front sight and a 125 rear notch. Now a lot of people say, well, if I've got a rear notch that's wider and a smaller front sight, it's gonna be more accurate. That is not the case in marksmanship in precision shooting with a handgun. We wanna have a tighter gap but we want more daylight, which is why we went deeper with it. So that way my brain picks up that information much quicker, sees the equal daylight because it's longer now, looking down the vergence of the human eye. I get that quick flush top and I press the shot off and you'll find that you'll have a higher hit probability because your eyes are now sending more efficient information to your brain. A big question that's always asked is point of aim, point of impact. Well, what should it be? Most manufacturers will try to gauge it about 25 meters of yards, but you gotta remember that there's a lot of things to take in consideration. How long's your barrel? How long's your slide? How high are your sights? And what ammo are you using is the biggest factor. If I'm using a carrier defensive ammo, I need to know what that point of aim is. Just like a rifle, it's gonna change. So you gotta know what ammo you're carrying. Don't go to the range with range ammo and think that that's what your carrier duty ammo is going to reflect as a POI. So make sure that you go out and you check those things. It's going to change. So again, if you say, well, I'm hitting three inches low with, with any given sights that I buy out there on the market or four or five inches high, what are you using that's making that happen? You have to identify that. Human beings, interesting thing. If I was to aim down range on the word incog on that shirt, I'm going to actually flush top the sights right underneath the C in incog. So that's a real human silhouette. It's not a piece of paper with a black circle on it. So that's something also to take into consideration is how do we actually see in like force on force scenarios, you might find you actually aim a little bit lower, which it's almost good to have a lollipop scenario of your sights on a target, meaning that C or that circle should sit right on top of the front sight. And that's what that means, to give you that perfect point of impact that you actually want on a real human being, okay? So guys, that's the big high level on the 13 handgun sights. Uh, and a little bit of an education, hopefully, on the stress sight picture versus precision sight picture. Now it's up to you to figure out when and where to use those. So get out there and deliberately practice those things. I'm Travis Haley. Thanks for joining me. Stay sharp and be safe.